Hi everybody, welcome back to Life of Dad and the second video in my series on how to buy a house. In the first video, I gave an overview of the seven steps to buying a house. So if you missed that video, pause this one and click the link in the description below to see part one. In this video, I'm gonna start going into the details on all the steps of buying a house, starting with step one, learning the market. Before I talk about learning the market, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can be aware of when I put out new videos. With that out of the way, let's get started. So how do you learn the market? I'll start with our personal story. In our case, we were moving to a new city for work. And before we moved, we did some research on neighborhoods we were interested in. Some good resources for this research are friends that live or have lived in the city you're moving to. If you're moving for work, your new employer and future colleagues are good resources. If you're part of a religious community, you can make some contacts through those. You can look up uh, your city subreddit on Reddit, use Google obviously, and talk to real estate agents. And if your job offers a relocation package, it may include tools like Neighborhood Scout, which can give you information about the demographics, crime, and other things in different zip codes that you're interested in. If at all possible, try to come into the city for a weekend or a few days and drive around neighborhoods that you're interested in. That's what we did. When we moved, we were interested in living near the Jewish community. So that quickly narrowed down our search to a few neighborhoods. We then got an Airbnb in one of the neighborhoods we were interested in, and we drove around the neighborhoods, we walked in a few areas, and we visited some places of worship. Even so, we decided to rent for the first year. And during that first year, we got a good feel for the commute to work, access to amenities in the area, like shopping areas, parks, museums, the zoo, and anything else we could think of. After a couple of months, we started going to open houses in the neighborhoods that we were still interested in. And honestly, the summers here are hot, so it was a good way to get out of the house with the baby without being outside in the heat. And it was kind of fun. We even went to fancy expensive houses that we had no ability or intention to buy just to see what they looked like. Other than seeing the houses, we got a good feel for the demographics of the neighborhood. Which neighborhoods had young families like ours, which were a little bit older and wealthier, which were more run down, which were more prone to flooding. And we also got great information talking to the real estate agents at the open houses and the neighbors. And after a while, it got to the point where if a house came on the market, I could immediately tell whether it was going to sit or go fast. Going to open houses is really the best way to get a handle on the market. Another bonus of this is you get to meet prospective real estate agents and get to know the tools of your area. Some localities have area specific real estate apps that are more up to date than Zillow or Redfin. Once you find the best website for your area, you should check it occasionally to see how prices are trending, if houses are sitting on the market or flying off, and be aware of good buying opportunities. In some cases, it may be better to jump on a good deal in the area you like and pay a fine for breaking your lease early rather than waiting on the sidelines waiting for your lease to end. In the end, after a few months of enjoying the open houses, we got a feel that the era of low interest rates was about to come to an end and we felt confident that we knew what and where we wanted to purchase. We had enough knowledge to set a realistic budget for the area and our needs, and we had met three real estate agents that we followed up with to decide which one to work with. In hindsight, I was so happy that we spent all that time doing the research. When we saw what we wanted, we were ready to leap at it. And although it did take us a few tries until we landed our house, we didn't feel like we were compromising on anything and we knew that we were getting a good deal in a great neighborhood. I highly recommend you do something similar, but if you don't have the option to for some reason, do as much research as you can. In real estate, knowledge really is power. Thank you for watching. If you got any value out of this video, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to be notified when the next video on this series talking about securing funding comes out. Thanks for watching. See y'all next time.